an unbeaten Gonzaga. If you were as good as these guys were, you'd be having that much fun too. Corey Kispert and company 12-0, the best offensive team in the nation. Hi, everybody. Good to have you with us. Dan Schulman, Jay Billis, along for Pepperdine and Gonzaga. Jay, what do you like so much about these Zags? There's nothing not to like about Gonzaga, Dan. It's the best team in the country, and as you say, the best offensive team in the country because they've got multiple playmakers, even coming off the bench. They've got three stars that lead the way, led by Corey Kispert, but they're just a fabulous passing team. They all know how to play. They all share the ball, and they're an excellent cutting and finishing team. Corey Kispert having a historic season, averaging over 20 a game, shooting 65% from the field. Drew Timmy inside and out, shooting 61% from the field as well as Timmy. And also Jalen Suggs, who's going to be a lottery pick All whenever right. he decides to go to the NBA. Leading this team in assists, he averaged five rebounds, 14 points. And that doesn't even cover Joel Ayayi. He's just coming off uh, the first ever triple-double in Gonzaga history. It's just an outstanding basketball team, really, and loaded at every position. Really an embarrassment of riches for Mark Few and Gonzaga. Don't you dare call this team a mid-major. This is an outstanding, good as it gets, college basketball program. Mark Few knew he had a good team loaded up in the non-conference, played a very tough schedule, a number of highly ranked teams, beat them all and beat most of them convincingly. Tonight on the other side, Jay, they'll see one of the best point guards on the West Coast in Colby Ross and really one of the best point guards in the country. Colby Ross leads the West Coast Conference in assists. He's second in points per game to Corey Kispert. He just knows how to play, he knows how to get fouled. Uh, one of the top assist guys, average over seven assists a game, one of the top assist guys in the country. Gonzaga's got to keep him from having a great game. Second time around for Lorenzo Romar at Pepperdine. Coached him for a few years back in the late 90s. This is his third year of his second stint. Longer stints at St. Louis and especially Washington. Gonzaga 12-0 in the season. 39 in a row against Pepperdine. That goes back about 18, 19 years. And we'll see how it turns out tonight. For Pepperdine, this is their first game in 23 days. They are coming off a lengthy COVID pause. But on a positive note, they do have their entire roster available to them for the first time all season. Not only did they deal with COVID issues, Jay, they dealt with a number of injuries as well. Yeah, very difficult for Pepperdine to get any continuity on the season. In the first possession, Gonzaga goes man-to-man. -man. They double the post. They are switching just about everything. Uh, Gonzaga doesn't get enough credit for being a good defensive team. They're in the top 25 in the country defensively from an efficiency standpoint. It's just their offense is so powerful. That's going to make every headline. Yeah, offensively in terms of efficiency, number one just ahead of Iowa. And you look at some of the point totals Gonzaga's put up. They scored 102 against Kansas. They scored 98 against Virginia. Corey Kispert had nine threes in that game, and they're coming off a win at Portland in which they scored 116 points. 98 against Virginia seems like a point total you'd have if you played them twice. Right. You know, the, the idea that you did that in 40 minutes really just shows just how powerful this Gonzaga offense can be. Drew Timmy, a big guy with so much skill, has it swatted away, and it'll still be Gonzaga ball. There are three mid-season Wooden Award candidates on the Gonzaga roster. Drew Timmy, Jalen Suggs, and Corey Kispert. Only two other programs, Illinois and Villanova, even have two players on the Wooden mid-season 25, and Gonzaga's got three. And each one of those players, Dan, can give you 25 in a heartbeat in any given game. Timmy lost the handle, ball still loose, and a fortunate bounce for the Zags. Shot clock did not reset. Timmy looking for help. Suggs the extra pass. Kispert for three, not there. A good block out by Kenna Chakuka there on Anton Watson. You know, Gonzaga doesn't look sharp right now. Usually the ball moves, there's player movement. They haven't had that the first couple possessions. They are 3-0 in league play under Mark Fuse. Had such a remarkable run in Spokane. Better than 600 wins in his career and a winning percentage of better than 83%. What Mark Few has done at Gonzaga is absolutely mind-boggling. It's beyond a great job. Can we say future Hall of Famer without any hesitation? 
zero hesitation. Yeah. I mean, as soon as it, it, as soon as they have another vote, I can't imagine that that he's not getting in. The first bucket of the game finally comes, and it belongs to Pepperdine. Victor Ohia Obioha, a 6'9 junior from Nigeria, gives the Waves an early lead. A shot blocker and a rim runner, and that was typical of a rim run, but they got out of transition because Gonzaga has not run good offense thus far in the game. And forgive me, it was Chukwuka on the bucket giving uh, Pepperdine the early lead, and then Gonzaga comes back with a basket at the other end to tie it, so it's 2-2, two, two, two and a half minutes in. Chukwuka for the three, not there, and down with the rebound is Kispert, a senior who toyed with the idea of turning pro, found out you know what he needed to work on, probably would have been a second round pick, came back, and he has gone from an extremely good player, Jay, to an outstanding All-American caliber player in his senior year. No, he's a great player. He, he can play anywhere on the floor. Uh, he's a he's six seven, big time jump shooter. You know, gets high up on that jump shot with a high release, can shoot it off the catch. He really hunts that shot. And you, you saw there on that last play, the cross court pass. They're, they're always looking for the open man. For Gonzaga, their go to guy is the open man on every possession. That's a great way to play. Joel Ayayi comes up with the steal. A little give and go. Bounce pass to Suggs. And then Ayayi is there to clean it up. A 6'5 guard who averages better than eight rebounds per game. He's their leading rebounder. As you say, it's 6'5 and thin. Gets two offensive rebounds a game. And it's not just that, that he pursues the ball and has a nose for it. He goes to the glass every possession. One of the reasons that Ayayi gets so many rebounds is he, because he goes to the glass. Not, not all players do that. Shot clock down to seven. Ross with a step back jumper, not there, from the rebound to Kispert. Well guarded by Anton Watson, an excellent athlete. When your 6'8 guy can switch out on the opposing point guard and do that good a job, you got a pretty good defense. Kispert open for three, and after the Wave scored the first bucket of the game, it's a 10-0 run right now for the Zags. Corey Kispert is allowed to shoot the ball from the catch spot. He, he's tough enough to deal with on the move. That's way too easy for Gonzaga. Just a really good job by uh, Ohia Obioha to set a screen, just roll right to the basket. But if you don't make Corey Kispert put the ball on the floor before he shoots it, he's going to tear you apart. Timmy will line up a three. And we get a foul going against Watson of the Zags to take us to our first media timeout with the number one team in the nation leading by six in the early going. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Save when you bundle auto, home, or motorcycle insurance. Visit Progressive. Early going, Dan Schulman, Jay Billis, Corey Kispert, Jay, all ready with a couple of threes and both set up by nice passes. Well, this is an outstanding passing team. Ayayi with that right-hand pass cross-court. And you see Kispert, who's got you know, great footwork. His shot preparation is excellent. Uh, just a beautiful stroke and does a great job. You know, a guy who, who can shoot it that well isn't just going to get catch-and-shoot shots whenever he feels like it. You know, he's constantly moving. He turns as he's getting into his shot. Uh, just a just a magnificent basketball player that's really gotten better year after year to get to this point. You can see 73% from two, 61% overall field goal percentage, 48% from three, and not surprisingly, a very good free throw shooter as well, 87% from the line. What an unbelievably productive player Corey Kispert has been this season. And it's amazing how many points in the paint that Gonzaga scores. And it's not because, you know, they jam it inside to Drew Timmy. It's because they're such a good cutting team and they get so much in transition. So they actually get a lot of layups. Well, here's a crazy stat for you. You and I were talking about this. One thing Gonzaga does not do a ton of is shoot the three. I mean, they can do it, but they're not an outstanding three-point shooting team as Johnny Smith comes up with a bucket for the Waves. But we mentioned that Gonzaga just scored 116 points at Portland in their last game. They had four threes in the game and scored 116 points. Yeah, it's really remarkable. I mean, Kispert is their best three-point shooter. You know, he's got 37 threes, including the two he made uh, early on in this game. But after that, it, it's Jalen Suggs and, and Joe, uh, Joel Ayayi. Other than that, there aren't a ton of shooters. 
Uh, right there is, uh, are the Zags at their best. They don't finish, but terrific in transition and rewarded with a trip to the free throw line. Well, they've got so many handlers, guys that can rebound and bring it up themselves. Uh, I mean, including Drew Timmy has done that. I mean, he did it against Portland, grabbed a rebound, brought it up uh, on his own. Uh, he also had 26 points in that game, but you've got multiple guys that can rip and run. They grab the board, they bring it up. You don't have to waste time making a, an outlet pass. And guys run, and they run to the rim. Uh, it's really a, it's a beautiful offense to watch because it's not based upon set plays. It's based upon actions and then reads that the players make based on those actions. And all of them are smart, and all of them know how to play. The one, two, two, three-quarter court pressure. Gonzaga's run that forever. Andre Ball with the elbow jumper, a cousin of the of Lonzo, Lamelo, the Ball family, a little bit strong on that one. Kispert thought about it. Instead, Timmy gets a touch, but he left it short. Ball's loose. Ayayi comes up with it, and the Zags retain possession. In and out for Kisper. Look at the effort by Suggs to keep it alive, but it goes over to the Waves. Ross in transition, takes a bump and turns it over. But he's a little upset that he didn't get a foul call there. He's really one on four. Look at Timmy. A big guy who handled and passed and played guard before a growth spurt in high school. And he has retained, Jay, all of those perimeter skills. And we were just talking about guys that can bring it up, and Timmy's one of them. And he initiates the offense and gives a little Euro step, a little in and out move, and goes right over the top of Chukwuka, who's a, a terrific athlete and a, a good defender. But he's more of a post defender, and Timmy took advantage of him uh, in a little bit more open space. And you saw his numbers on the season, terrific. He's had some big games, 29 against Virginia, 25 against Kansas. Timmy's from Texas and uh, gave a, a good look, almost wound up going to Texas Tech, but when he was making a decision, he wound up telling Texas Tech head coach Chris Beard that, you know, I really like Gonzaga's style of play and their coaching staff, and Chris told me, he goes, what was I going to do, tell them the coaches aren't good guys? He goes, they're, they're, the best, they're the best guys there are. He says, they can make them into a pro? How am I going to argue with that? Right. Hey, Chris Beard got a big win last night, didn't he? Back to Clung with a game winner to, to beat the Longhorns in Austin. Yeah, that was a great win for Texas Tech, and they showed a ton of toughness coming back in that game because they could have packed it in. Ross knocks down a three for Pepperdine to get him back within seven. What do you think it's like for a team like the Waves, Jay? Lorenzo Romar's team has not played in 23 days because of COVID. How tough is that? Well, it's really difficult, and, and you know, although Florida State might say it's not so bad. I mean, Florida State just came off a pause, and they wound up scoring over 100 against NC State and shot over 70%. Yeah. So I don't think I don't think it bothered the Seminoles that badly, but just not having the continuity of being able to practice. I mean, Pepperdine couldn't really practice. They had kind of more individual work for the longest time, so they're not going to be, you would imagine they're not going to be as sharp and maybe as physical as they'd like to be in a game where you need to be. Another great feed inside, and the beneficiary is Ayayi for the easy bucket. The Florida State dismantled NC State last night as Ross gets a floater to go on the baseline. You and I will see the Seminoles against North Carolina Saturday at noon. Florida State's got so much depth. I mean, they just bring, it's like watching a hockey team when they, uh, they make a line change. And we're going to push underneath, going against Pepperdine as Ayayi was in there hunting a rebound again at the offensive end. Yeah, it's so hard to block out Ayayi because he's coming from the perimeter. And, and the truth is, most wings aren't used to, on the perimeter, turning around and blocking out. They're used to just going and getting the ball. And Ayayi can be quicker to the ball than a lot of the wings he plays against. Aaron Cook to inbound it for Gonzaga, a grad transfer by way of Southern Illinois, who has given the Zags some nice minutes. Really good veteran quality depth off the bench at the point guard spot. Another great feed. That was from Andrew Nemhard to Umar Balo, but Balo couldn't finish it. And Nemhard is such a good passer and a good player. He's excellent in pick and rolls. I think uh, Mark Few has called him surgical in the way he dissects a pick and roll. 
He came up with a loose ball, finds a wide open Kispert, who misses the three. He doesn't miss many of those, does he? No. Made a couple early, two for four on the night from three-point range. Colby Ross, the leader for Pepperdine. No active player has no active player has more career assists than the guy with the ball right now with Ross, who drives and draws the foul and will be at the free throw line when we come back. Well, Jalen Suggs, an outstanding basketball player. Pretty good at another sport, too. Maybe this will give you a hint. We'll talk about it when we come back. Could have been a great college and, and eventually pro quarterback with his ability to sling it and then being 6'5 and having all of those physical gifts. And Mr. Basketball and Mr. Football in the state of Minnesota. And a McDonald's All-American in basketball decided to focus on basketball and eventually chose Gonzaga over schools like his home state school, Minnesota, Florida, Florida State, Iowa State were other programs that he considered. Just a freshman, if you look at any NBA mock draft, you will see Jalen Suggs listed in the top five. You and I were doing a game against West Virginia a few weeks back when Suggs suffered what looked like a very serious ankle injury. It was you know, kind of mid to late in the first half, and he came back in the second half and finished out the game. Shocked both of us the way that it looked when the injury happened. Well, the way it looked when it happened, and, and of course, we never want to speculate. We did not know, but it looked like an Achilles. The, the way, remember the way he responded yeah. to it right away? Yeah. And we, we everybody was fearful, and, and we weren't the only ones thinking it. I promise you that. But when he came back into the game, uh, the, just the fact that he, he wanted to get back out there and, uh, and really gutted it out it was really impressive. Johnny Smith with another bucket. Pepperdine back within five, but now a foul on the inside on Andre Ball. We'll send Joel Ayayi to the line. It's so impressive the way Gonzaga moves without the ball. They, they cut hard, and they move the ball so well. Then you've got Timmy posting up and drawing so much attention that Ayayi was able to get lost on that cut. And Kispert, if you don't get pressure on the ball to take away vision, they're going to pick you apart. You mentioned it off the top of the show, Joel Ayayi coming off a triple-double in the win over Portland a few days ago. The first triple-double in program history, and maybe most amazingly, he had the triple-double three minutes into the second half. There were still 17 minutes left in the game, and he already had it. Ultimately finished with 12 points, 13 rebounds, and 14 assists. When you saw that, that Ayayi had the first triple-double in Gonzaga history, I, I can't I can't lie to you, I, I was surprised. Yeah. Not surprised that he got it, but surprised that it hadn't been done before with all the, the truly great players and NBA players that Gonzaga's had over the last 20 years. Plus, Absolutely. John Stockton played at Gonzaga <laughs> and, uh, and never had one. That, that's uh, pretty amazing for Ayayi to be the, the first, and I know there'll be others, but to be the first. Robbie Heath off the bench with a bucket for the Waves, and they are hanging around 10 minutes into the game, almost down by four. Wide open look for Cook not there, and a better job of the glass this time by Pepperdine. And that's a wide open three for Aaron Cook who transferred in from Southern Illinois as a, a grad transfer, essentially. Uh, but, you know, you're not going to get a better shot than that. And Zaga now, after a couple of early threes by Kispert, that's it from beyond the arc so far. They are two of nine from three-point range. Ross with a pull-up, and it's a two-point game. That is big time. He is so good using ball screens. Doesn't just blast off it. Plays with great pace. He can snake through defenders, which he did right before our last break where he got, he got fouled. He's just got a, a great ability to make decisions and get fouled doing it. And he's put up some huge numbers. Had 43 in a double overtime loss to St. Mary's in a West Coast Conference tournament game last year and had 33 in a triple overtime loss to UCLA earlier this season. Well, Robbie Heath didn't hit that three, but that was a great pass by Colby Ross. Gonzaga's not moving the way they normally move. They got to get better ball movement and player movement. That's that's the way they play, and thus far it's been a little bit slower than, than you'd expect from, from the Zags.
Take a look here at Colby Ross just coming off that ball screen and then pulling up. Timmy wasn't right on top of it, but if you do get up and crowd him, he's going to be able to put a little pack, uh, pocket pass and get it to Kendall Munson there over, or he just goes over the top and hits the wing on the opposite side. Just a, a great awareness off of screen roll situations for Colby Ross. But a problem here for Lorenzo Romar in the waves. Foul number two, and at least for now, Ross goes to the bench, and we'll see how long he stays there. He's a senior, and does Romar trust him to get back in there at some point and play with a couple of fouls? Well, I would venture to guess that after the next break, he's coming back in. That you just want to keep him from picking up that third one before you go to the next TV timeout. But I don't think he's going to spend much time on that bench at all. Ayayi splits a pair, and it's a three-point lead for the Zags. Their closest game this year was a five-point win over West Virginia. Every other game has been by more than that, but they've got themselves a bit of a battle on their hands right now as Heath knocks down a jumper, and the Waves are only down by one. Heath is from Australia. He came into this game only one of nine from the field, but he can really shoot it. Excellent free throw shooter. He's got a great stroke. Ayayi for three, the assist to Timmy. That's really good inside-outside interaction. You get it into the post, it collapses the defense, and Timmy's such a willing passer, hits Ayayi with a great pass. He fouled on the uh, jumper. Ayayi eventually acknowledges that it was on him. He didn't like that call at all. Saturday got a couple of great games to start a full day of college basketball on ESPN. As Jay and I mentioned, we'll have the Tar Heels and the Seminoles at noon Eastern. Then it's off to the SEC for Kentucky and Auburn. Sharif Cooper with a couple of games under his belt for the Tigers. Both games also available on the ESPN app. Sharif Cooper has been eligible for Auburn for a couple games now. That dude is a baller, man. If he'd play, if he played the whole season, we'd be he'd be a household name by now. I mean, he's a 25 point a game guy. He's that good. It's close at the kettle. Gonzaga leading Pepperdine by two. Two. And the late Paul Westfall, uh, who sadly passed away very recently. He was the head coach of the Waves then. Uh, a Naismith Basketball Hall of Famer, the head coach in Malibu at the time, the last time that Pepperdine defeated Gonzaga. Paul Westfall was not only a, a great player, great Hall of Famer, went to Aviation High School in Redondo Beach, not far from where I grew up, and starred at Southern Cal back when you know UCLA was everything and had a, a near undefeated team that only lost to UCLA when he was playing for the Trojans. And, and had a, a great NBA career, large part of that with the Phoenix Suns. I mean, what a, what a great human being Paul Westfall was. And the officials stopped time. I think the shot clock reset, and they did not want it to reset. It was, I don't think they deemed that to be a change of possession as the ball was kind of batted around before the Zags got it back. So, yeah, there the shot clock is hit 21. And Joel Ayayi coming off that triple-double. He's already got 11 points and four steals, three rebounds as well. As the tip is up and good for Anton Watson. Well, they got the ball to Drew Timmy on that out-of-bounds underneath. Good cut inside by Heath. That was really pretty. This is just Heath's third game for the Waves coming off injuries. Played at Westchester University last year, a Division II school in Pennsylvania where he scored better than 24 points per game. Just a terrific pass. Wasn't a bullet, just sort of like one of those, you know, out, backside shoulder passes you throw to somebody going to the end zone and just out of the reach of Andrew Nemhard, the defender. And pretty good and English on the reverse layup, too. Majoring in, in English. Well, one, of, one of the things that Pepperdine has to do is they've got to get Kessler Edwards involved in the game. Yeah. You know, when he gets when he gets in there, he's got to he's got to score. Right now, Heath becoming the go-to guy for the Waves. You mentioned Edwards; he's a 17-point a game guy 
for Pepperdine this year. He has not scored in this game. He's about 6'8", really good athlete that can step away and shoot it. You know, coming into the game, he'd made 17 out of 41 threes. That's about 41-42%. But he's got great versatility. He's the top rebounder on this Pepperdine team. He can play inside and out. But I don't think Pepperdine can, can win this game if he doesn't put some significant points on the board. This is one thing they do very well. Fourth in Division One in free throw shooting. One of two for Heath and a one-point game. Heath now with nine points off the bench. The bench numbers are 16 to nothing in favor of Pepperdine. Well, usually that wouldn't bother you as long as your starters are killing it. Timmy, nice spin move. Got it back, had it blocked. And saved. Great hustle there. Boy, what a difference to have Ohia Obioha in there to be able to protect the rim. They were missing that when they played Cal State Bakersfield. And Pepperdine has taken the lead in Spokane on the number one team in the nation. Cedric Altman with a bucket, waves by one. Kispert hesitated on that shot. He had a wide open three and usually does not hesitate. Jalen Suggs on the drive and draws the foul. Did a great job, did Jalen Suggs, of going right into the defense. You know, you could see right there that Cedric Altman did not have legal guarding position, and Suggs knew it and just sought out his body and created that contact. His first points of the night and a chance for a three-point play. Jalen also second cousin to footballer Terrell Suggs. And as we mentioned before, Jalen with some football in his background as well. Mr. Football in the state of Minnesota last year. Boy, that's a, a lob into about quadruple coverage right there. That one had no chance of working. Suggs hits the deck and saves it. Oh, what a pass. And then all alone, a sweet feed underneath for the bucket. Boy, Demhart did such a good job of faking to Kispert in the left corner and then finding a teammate under the bucket. That was just absolutely beautiful. That was like a quarterback looking off a primary receiver. Just outstanding basketball through Demhart. Now, after Suggs is able to get him the ball here, that just that pass fake got the defense to jump and then found Suggs underneath. Just spectacular passing by Andrew Nemhart. A two-year starter with the University of Florida who transferred to Gonzaga. Has an unbelievable assist to turnover ratio this year of four and a half to one. 54 assists and 12 turnovers coming into the game tonight. Timmy, and he'll go to the free throw line. Timmy's just such a good job of running the floor and getting post position under the basket. And then with that four and around, uh, four around one configuration that Gonzaga has, he's going to be open. They just have to get the ball to the right angle. A little bit strong on the free throw there. You see three of the guys on the Zags team with really good assist to turnover numbers, especially Nemhard Ayayi. 3.4 to 1 and Suggs just about 2 to 1. Well, when you combine that kind of passing ability and feel for the game with protecting the ball as well and being able to play at a, a high rate of speed and still take care of the ball, that, that's that's big time. It, it means Gonzaga is going to get more shots. And with the Darryl way they Pope can score, you get more shots, you're going to be in good shape. I'm sorry, Jay. Darrell Pope Jr. with a driving layup. That won't make Mark Few happy. That was too easy. And they're getting some minutes out of Polk with uh, Colby Ross on the bench with a couple of fouls. And the block underneath, Kispert will be going to the free throw line. Kispert has such a great base. Here's uh, just too easy, as, as you had mentioned, off that little ball screen. There's just no help at all and no communication. And then a terrific job by Kispert. When he caught the ball, caught it, great base, shot fake, and drive.
everything he does is, is so I mean it's it's so simple in concept but it's just hard to do you know, he, he's he's such a smart player he's got great feet and and just spectacular technique and he's been a big part of an unbelievable run in recent years for the Zags his record Jay this is, he's a senior in four years now in Spokane his record is hundred and seven and ten as a collegiate it's unbelievable it is unbelievable the one three one half-court trap here by Gonzaga Suggs on the back end and Kessler Edwards way too strong with a three a fresh possession though now for the waves but not for long they turn it over Zags looking to run as always and Suggs called for the offensive foul that'll be his second Boy, just on that break that was a heck of a catch in transition by Ayayi that that ball was thrown behind him caught it with his right hand you know, tough call for Suggs. Not sure I agree with it, but, you know, it was close. So Suggs to the bench after picking up his second. And this is where they really benefit from the transfer of Nebhard, getting a season starting point guard in there who can play alongside Suggs or really operate at the point when Suggs is on the bench. Boy, having... Anton Watson at 6'8 with his athleticism to be able to essentially play the point of that 1-3-1 one, one, just giving Pepperdine a little bit of a different look so they can't just you know, really Pepperdine has kind of been waltzing into their offense without a lot of pressure so Mark Few and his staff wanting to switch things up a little bit Cedric Altman at the line for Pepperdine a sophomore from Rialto California averaging about six and a half points per game Give the Waves credit. Again, I know we mentioned it, but coming off a 23-day COVID pause, they do have their entire roster available to them for the first time all season, and they are playing hard, playing well, and giving number one everything they can handle those so far. Yeah, and Gonzaga, I think, is used to this kind of thing where, you know, you watch some of Pepperdine's tapes. I mean, actually, when I told uh, Lorenzo Romar, you know, I'd watched their last two games, you know, pretty intently. He says, well, you've seen all our dirty laundry. Their last two games, they did not play well. Didn't play well defensively. Their rebounding was poor. You know, a lot of holes that were exposed by, especially Cal State Bakersfield. But you knew that, that that was not the team that played the last two games for Pepperdine was not going to the team that was going to show up tonight that they were going to play with everything they had. They've done that thus far. Oh, bad pass there, stolen away. And this will be an easy one for Watson. And after the Kispert three the time before, all of a sudden it's an eight-point lead now for the Zags. You know, Watson's coming off a really good game against Portland. He had 23. And such a good athlete with quick feet and good skills. And he really can be a game-changer defensively because he can guard one through five. And a Spokane native as well. So playing for his hometown team and playing well. Pepperdine led very briefly for a grand total of 14 seconds. But the Zags have responded. A Kispert three. A Watson steal and slam. The Zags by eight. Yeah, Sean, uh, Michigan's top tier uh, along with, with Baylor and Gonzaga. I mean, I think Gonzaga's the best offensive team. Baylor's the, the most complete offense and defense. Actually, Baylor's a better three-point shooting team than Gonzaga. When was the last time we've said that in the last 20 years? But, but I agree with you. Michigan is spectacular. And Hunter Dickinson has been, along with Kate Cunningham of Oklahoma State, I think the best freshman in America. I mean, what, what other freshman is playing at as high a level as Dickinson? This was remarkable. Michigan at seven. That win over Wisconsin was unbelievably impressive. And we both think, Jay, they'll move up to three or four or something like that when the, the new poll comes out on Monday with Isaiah Livers and Franz Wagner, Mike Smith, the grad transfer from Columbia. I mean, they just got so many weapons, so many different ways to beat you. If they're not three, like I... I, I I can't make a case for, for Michigan to be one or two because of Baylor and Gonzaga. But if Michigan's not three, there needs to be some sort of investigation. <laughs> uh, because they, they've beaten three top, what is it, three top 15 teams Something by like that, 19 yeah. or more, which has not happened before. And they, they, their game against Wisconsin, after a while, it looked like clubbing baby seals. They beat them so badly, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe what I was seeing.
they had a run that started late in the first half and carried over into the second half that was a 36 to 3 run against wisconsin which is a top 10 team itself you and i saw wisconsin uh, maybe at their best against what was then an undermanned Louisville team, but Wisconsin's really good, really old, really connected. Wisconsin, had, uh, Michigan rather, had a 36-3 run against the Badgers. Yeah, I mean, you hear about a run like that in, in a, a game against another opponent. You might say, okay, well, I could see that happening. I mean, it's still extraordinary. Against Wisconsin? I mean, what would the odds of that have been going into the game if somebody had said, hey, you know, I think the Michigan's going to go on a 36-3 run against Wisconsin. You go, no way. And it happened. Kessler Edwards, a 42% three-point shooter on the season, knocks down a three. Fourth assist of the game for Ross, and Pepperdine back with an eight. Now they come up with a steal. But Pepperdine is really rallying to the ball. That was just not a good pass because Timmy was surrounded. Edwards, same spot, same result, and all of a sudden it's a five-point game. And timeout, That's Mark exact. Hugh. When you're a small business owner, there's no such thing as nine to five. Days are longer, and business hours, well, they're anything but predictable, especially when you have clients like ours. When I considered payroll providers for my business, I looked for a solution that fit into my busy schedule. Sure Payroll makes running payroll fast and easy so I can spend extra time with these guys. Visit surepayroll.com for a two month free trial and find out what makes us different because small business is our business. Kessler Edwards is the top three-point shooter on this Pepperdine team. He is sixth in the West Coast Conference in scoring. And he needed to get off the schneid early on in this game. He hadn't scored. He was 0 for 4 and has already knocked down a couple of threes. He's now 2 of 5 from three-point range and scored six quick points. And that makes Pepperdine a completely different team. Oh, the brother Cameron had a terrific career in Malibu, graduated last year. Nemhard with a layup. I'll tell you, I know this. I think if I went to college in Malibu and they granted an extra year, I think I'm staying no matter what. I don't care what my options in life are. If they give me a fifth year in Malibu, Jay, I'm taking it. Well, I grew up about 20 miles south of Pepperdine, and actually when, when I was in high school, Jim Herrick was the coach at Pepperdine recruited me and he used to call up and say it's mighty fine at the dine today Jay <laughs> and he was right every day it's mighty fine at the dine I'll tell you Lorenzo what Dan Romar. it's pretty it's a pretty good decision by Lorenzo Romar I, I thought that Colby Ross be back in the game in no time with those two fouls but look how well that Pepperdine's been able to hang in there essentially without him and Nemhard dipped the shoulder he gets called for the foul by the way, just for fun, as you heard the guys back in the studio, uh, uh, Sean Farnham was asking Jay about a Gonzaga Baylor being in the top two as you get another look at the foul. Just for fun. Remember, Gonzaga and Baylor were supposed to play earlier this year, but a COVID issues forced the postponement of that game. It may be a long shot, Jay, but if somehow there was a window available for both programs, both coaches have said they are still very open to the idea of trying to get that game in. Yeah, basically, Mark Few was saying, just leave your cell phone on, and there are going to be a lot of opportunities to try to get games in with all the disruptions we've had. And, you know, both Gonzaga and Baylor have tried to find other games. Chaka Smart at Texas. Boy, if I were Gonzaga, I'd go right at Colby Ross right now. It's Heath guarding Ayayi with nine seconds to go in the half. Off the fingertips of Timmy. And a shot clock violation. We'll give it back over to the Waves. Boy, Dan, you know, we've been talking about this has not been the best half we've seen from Gonzaga. It probably one of their you know, least efficient halves. They still got 43 points. Yeah. 43 points. And they didn't play well. Good if it goes, and it does! Polk 
went three quarters the length of the court, got it off in time, and knocks down a three to get Pepperdine within four at the break. Just a poor job by Gonzaga. Aaron Cook wouldn't pick him up, didn't stay in front, just too easy, but a terrific job by Polk, who came in when Ross went out and really did a nice job. Lefty just launching that up, never took his eyes off the rim. What a pick-me-up for Pepperdine going into halftime. And again, outstanding alliteration from Jay Billis, and effortlessly so. They're checking to make sure that it's good. It sure, with the naked eye, it sure did look like it was going to count. And it is. There it is. It's a three. And it's a four-point game. Number one to Gonzaga getting a real fight from Pepperdine. Time now for the Jeep Halftime Report. Back to the studio. Here's Kevin Clark.